Well, God is good. It's so awesome that we can belong to the church. We can belong to the body of Christ, the body of Christ all over the world. Now, once I went to South Africa on an HIV AIDS conference and um, as I was there, uh, I took a break, you know, um, I wanted to go see a nearby church. I can go find a church and I couldn't get to the church service, but I still went into the building. And I met with a few believers and it was so good just to be there um, and you just feel at home there in, in that sanctuary where they were gathered. I can connect with, with those people, even though I didn't know them, um, a different country, different continent altogether, different culture altogether. But I can connect in my spirit with them because we're all part of the body of Christ. And that's so wonderful. And um, so we all belong to this one church and we need to pray for the church worldwide. Pray for the church worldwide. So the Lord um, gave John, he said, okay, write to all these churches. And he said, so I turned to hear this voice that was talking to me from behind. I, I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, seven golden lampstands. And we will see the Bible interprets itself. And this is going to be key to us interpreting the book of Revelation because within the book itself, a lot of the symbols are actually um, an explanation is given to us. And if it's not there in this book, we can have some clues from other books in the Bible like Daniel and Ezekiel and so on. So the seven lampstands are actually, we will see there the seven churches. I turned to hear the voice speaking to me and I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man. Now we know Jesus is the son of God, the son of God. But this word son of man, this phrase son of man is actually a very, very powerful um, uh, a phrase referring to Jesus. Now, like some people would argue and they would say, well, Jesus, um, he called himself um, the son of man. He didn't say he was the son of God, something like that. No, would say things like that. But actually, the son of man is a very, um, it's even stronger claim to his deity, to him being God than son of God is. Uh, and I'll explain to you why I say that. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse number 13, it says this, I saw in the night visions, behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. Son of man. And he came to the ancient of days, this is God the Father, and was presented before him. And to him, this is the son of man, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him, that is Jesus. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom of um, the, the church of Jesus Christ, and the kingdom of God is going to last forever. Outlast Babylonian Empire, Assyrian Empire, um, the, the, the Grecian Empire, and Roman Empire. You know, and that's which is coming with the Antichrist. The church is going to outlast it, and Jesus is the king. So here he was. Um, um, in, in the, he saw the lampstands, and one like a son of man, clothed, the Bible says, with a long robe, and with a golden sash around his chest. This this robe and this sash speaks to, um, to Jesus as our high priest, our high priest wearing that that long robe. He's dressed like the high priest. And the golden sash also can, can speak to um, to royalty. And the Bible goes on. The hairs of his head were white. White. Like like white wool. His eye, um, Like snow. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. Think about that. Hairs of his head white. This speaks to his, his glory. His purity. And then the Bible says his eyes were like a flaming fire. He has this penetrating look. And he's the one who searches our hearts and our lives. So he's looking at us. He's looking at us with eyes of righteousness and um, penetrating with fire and, and able to judge, able to assess us, you know, where we are and, and, and how we live. And the Bible says his feet were like burnished bronze. And that speaks to judgment, the one who comes to judge. Um, refined in a furnace, refined in a furnace. And his voice was like, his voice was like the roar of many waters. And, you know, whenever we, we see in the scriptures, we hear God speaking and, and people describing it. It is like the roar of many waters. So here is Jesus 
I, I think there's a huge contrast here with that babe in Bethlehem and that that person who died on the cross who seemed to be weak and, and suffering and everyone taking advantage of him and and um and reviling him, humiliating him and and so on. He was there naked and, and put to shame. It is quite different this time around. Not the baby, not the suffering savior on the cross, but here he is um as God, as God, powerful. And this is the this is the way we need to see Jesus. This is the way we need to see Jesus today, the one who's so awesome, who's so great. And if I may read that again, the hairs of his head were like white, like wool and snow, eyes like a flame of fire, feet were like burnished bronze, refined in the furnace, voice like the roar of many waters. So when you think about Jesus today, reflect upon him, what this, this sort of picture. So begin to visualize Jesus, imagine who this Jesus really is today. Ponder upon these words. Blessed be the name of the Lord.